Oh, what is this? This doesn't look like the current set. I have no idea what's going on. So is this the uh, the arena cube? Um, well, Ulamog looks good. I can draft ramp and draft around that. Hey, what's up, Ixa? Glad you're here. I'm gonna need some help. I didn't know we weren't drafting Crimson Vow tonight. So uh, we've got Ulamog. Uh, seems like a good card to first pick because I can draft ramp or like reanimation or whatever. Well, that makes two of us, Ixa. Uh, Infernal Grasp is certainly good efficient removal. You don't mind losing two if you're going to be able to kill anything for two mana. I'm guessing most of the rest of these are not really in contention. Lyra is probably, like, okay, but there's usually plenty of removal in cube. Seek a basic and put it on a battlefield tap. Then seek a permanent with mana value equal to the number of lands you control. Well, that seems good. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how to draft this cube. I don't know what, the, you know, what's good. Ulamog is a really powerful card. So, like, if I start with that first pick, I can try and build around it. I mean, if we get hit with a bunch of aggro stuff, then we can drop the Ulamog. But if potentially we see, like, ramp, then maybe we'll draft Ulamog ramp. So along those lines, Meat Hook Massacre would probably go pretty well with it. Ramp decks want sweepers. Um... Marius Call is probably just a really good card as a split card land spell. Otherwise, what is Faceless Agent? I don't even know these like made-up cards from made-up sets. Enters the battlefield, seek a creature card of the most prevalent creature type in your library. Seek is search your library for one, or I don't, I don't even know what's going on. Oracle of Maldai is a good ramp card. I mean, you're going to play land heavy in a ramp deck generally, and then you can uh, hit lands and put them out. And you can get value out of that thing right the turn you play it. You know, if you spike land on top, or you can play an additional land from your hand, even if they have removal. So, first pick to Ulamog. I think I'm going to take Oracle of Moldaya here. I mean, I mean, Ulamog probably wants to be in a ramp deck. Like, we're not going to draft Tron, but we can draft, like, some green ramp. Um, I think Meat Hook Massacre might be pretty good uh, with Ulamog in that kind of deck as well. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, is this the Arena Cube? I don't even know what I'm drafting. It says Cube Draft up at the top here, so I assume it's, like, the Arena Cube, but I genuinely have no idea. I, I played this cube, like, twice. Um, Basswood Surge. I mean, it's not a really efficient ramp card for a land-heavy deck. Basswood Surge could be good if you were, like, an elf ramp deck, because then sometimes you pump all your elves. But then again, it does put two lands in play and get us close to casting Ulamog, which is our goal. Hey, Voxy, you're going to have to help me. You play Cube, right? I don't know what is going on. Um, ramp decks do want sweepers, so Realm Cloak Giant. And Realm Cloak Giant's a really powerful sweeper, because then you get a 7-7. Seven, seven. So, and you get both. So that, that's a potential pick for sure. Um, so I think this is between, like, like Vastwood Surge for our Ramp Ulamog Oracle Moldaya theme, or Realm Cloaked. I mean, I guess... I mean, can we play non-green? Probably not. I mean, we can still play green-white, but I don't think we want to commit to all that, so I'm just going to grab Vastwood Surge. This is the one that searches for two basics, right? And then if you can kick it, you can pump your stuff. So, I mean, it's a fine card. I don't know if it's going to perform that well in our deck. Um, Guardian Idol is a good ramp for two mana. And then we can play Oracle turn three. I like that. And usually, like, in this day and age of Magic, like I said, I, like, 15 times, I don't know this cube, but just in general, you can pretty much get a variety of decent ramp one for three or ramp two for four, but two mana ramp is usually at a real premium. Like, you usually want to value, like, rampant growth, like two mana search for land, put it in play, or, or Guardian Idol, something like that. You usually want to value pretty highly. Um, Dragon's Guard Elite. Seems fine. We're probably going to have plenty of spells, but I don't think I even care that much about pumping that. So I think I'm just going to grab the idol and stay on theme. I'm drafting a little less open than I normally do if you watch my Crimson Battle drafts or my current set drafts, because I don't know what I'm doing, so kind of got to try and stick to an archetype. I can't really bob and weave quite as expertly. Not that I always get that right either, but you know what I mean. The more you know what you're doing, the more you can draft the hard way. Um... All right, let's see. So this can sack a land to search for any land. That was really important the last time we cubed, but that was because we had Field of the Dead. This time, like, it looks like we're going to draft more of just, like, a green ramp deck, and then we don't really care that much about being able to sack a land and put a different land in play. 
Tangled Florahedron might be another good, like, you can play it on turn two for a two mana ramp. It'll probably die most of the time, but sometimes they don't have removal. And then later in the game, it's just a land if you want it to be, or if you have a land, light hand, it's just a land. Um, are there any really good lands? I mean, there is a green-white and a black-green duel that are both pretty good. Probably should just stick with what we're trying to do. Okay, speaking of good two-mana ramp, I'm looking to play a land-heavy version, because I have uh, Oracle, so Explore should slot in nicely. So, I mean, we're doing good on the ramp side of this. We've got to find some non-Ulamogs uh, to ramp out. Hey, thanks for subscribing, Salt. Appreciate the 14 months of support. Yeah, Constructed Limited. You know, uh, Justin Cohen, I think, was the one who said this back in the day. I always quote him on it. I, I was talking about how I don't really like Cube. Like, I'm not against it. I just don't love it. And I think he was the one who said this. I hope it was him, because if not, I'm getting But it was the perfect way to describe it. He said, I know why you don't like Cube. Too much Constructed and you're limited. And I was like, yeah, that's pretty much exactly it. I mean, if, you know, if it's grindy and low power in an interesting balanced format, like, it can be fun. I'm not like... You know, I'm not like against the concept of cubing, but by and large, it just feels like too much constructed in my limited. It feels like the decks are really focused a lot of the time and things like that. All right, so treasure map is a really good ramp card with Ulamog. Even though it doesn't ramp you quickly, it gives you three different treasures. And then if you're, you don't normally sack those to cast things because you can sack them one at a time to draw cards. But if you're, if you're putting out a turn six, set, turn seven Ulamog because you just flipped treasure map and got three additional treasures to sack, that's incredible. I mean, don't get me wrong, like Wolf Halo Haven would be great. Old Rust Scene looks like a fine card. But I think Treasure Map, if we're going to play like a 10 mana card and we're going to go for like a power ramp deck, I think Treasure Map's going to be exactly what we want. Plus, like I said, if we don't draw like Ulamog or, when we, or we have a million lands, then we can draw cards and dig to our power cards. Because, you know, at this point, we only have Ulamog to ramp to, but it's only pack one. We've done a really good job so far of picking up Explore, Treasure Map, Guardian Isle, Flora Hedge, and Oracle. Like, we're good at ramping. So we're going to be looking for other power cards. You know, anything that... And basically, when you're drafting a deck like this, anything that costs, like, seven or more mana is going to, you know, look shiny to us, right? It's going to catch our eye. Um... All right, so these cards don't look great. Ranger's Class, even though it's cheap, it's at, you, it's actually a pretty good mana sink, right? You can spend eight mana on this. It's pretty profitable. So uh, I'll grab that. I don't know if it's going to be good for us or not, depending on how many creatures we end up with. But none of the rest of these cards seem exciting. Yeah, which could be decent. I, I mean, I'm not planning to draft mono green, but I am looking for a reason to go into a second color. Because, you know, like, we might get a black sweeper. We might get a white sweeper. You know what I mean? So I... I don't necessarily want to go into a second color lightly. Because most of our ramp at our, right now is not five color stuff, right? Like, Vastwood searches for any basic, but most of the rest of this just adds green mana or, or you just lets you put lands in play. So I, I don't want to take a second color too lightly. So I don't think uh, Sword's going to help us. Cast Out could be good removal. I think it probably makes more sense to get a great dual land before the, uh, the mediocre card for our deck. So I'm going to grab Temple in case we play white. By no means am I playing white for that temple. It's it's just in case. I'm going to grab Overgrown Tomb for the same reasons. And I mean, look, we might play green-red. We might play green-blue, right? We could play green anything, clearly. But white and black are the colors that generally have sweepers. So those colors generally pair the best, you know, with late game and ramp cards. But we'll have to, uh, you know, see what we get. I've seen, you know, plenty of good red, green, blue, green ramp decks. Uh, one of the few decks that I, like, sem semi-built was Valakut when it first came out in Zendikar. Um, and that was, you know, a green, red ramp deck. Um, okay, but there's a Realm Cloak Giant. So that's a potential pickup that would be really good for us. Seven mana, so we can cast it afterwards, and that won't be a problem. The Trium would be sweet, but I think we have a white duel, and a, a good sweeper like Realm Cloak is exactly what we want, so... I'm not, I'm, I'm big on uh, taking these triumphs aggressively, but I mean, this is a good sweeper. This isn't even like an okay sweeper. We get a 7-7 seven, seven finisher after we sweep the board. Like, that's like exactly what we were looking for. Kiora may be good or may not, depending on what we get. Mostly at the Hard Rock, to be honest, Kirkland Signature. Come find me in the 2-5 game at the Hard Rock. Um, I don't think we're going to play any of these cards, but maybe Death Cap if we end up playing Black. Noxious Gear Hulk, that's a nice card to ramp into if we go black. So at this point, we're green. Kiora works well with big creatures, and we're going to try and draft like big green monsters to ramp into. Uh, sweepers are obviously good in this kind of deck as well. We don't really even have mana, mana dorks except Tangle Florahedron. 
All right, so let's see. Bone Crusher, would, that's a, just a good, efficient card in any deck, but it's not, like, exciting for us. Birth of Melitus would be fine if we go, like, a two-color green-white, but my concern is we won't have that many basic planes in our deck, necessarily. Approach of the Second Sun could be a fine win condition for a ramp deck, but that's a card that wants to go with more card drawing and dig, which we don't have a lot of, um, and we're not planning to get that much of. Is the deck of many things good? What does this thing do? I, this card's fancy. I remember this. So you, like, roll... And then it, sometimes you get a card back, sometimes you draw two. It seems like something we could use, but it's pretty slow. Celestis, this is also pr a pretty good card. I mean, it is a ramp card, it is a fixer, and then also you can rummage away lands. But I think Scoot Swarm looks like, and Hydra, these both look like good cards for us to be ramping into. You have a giant X creature and landfall. I mean, we're really good at putting extra lands in play. That's what most of our ramp is at this point. You know, Oracle, Surge, and Explorer. So I think I just want Scoot Swarm. That looks like a, a card that's cheap enough to like kind of put some stuff out early and block with, and then can be a win condition as well. Maybe Voracious Hydra is better and this pick is bad, I don't know, but I like that Scoot Swarm could be effective right away. Okay, speaking of monsters to ramp into, there's two that I'm looking at in this pack. Well, maybe three if, if we're going to play Realm Cloak for white. T Tubler's Huntmaster is just an awesome card. Ren and Seven I think is a pretty good card as well, right? And Sarah the Benevolent, look, that card is pretty powerful. I know we're not going to have a bunch of creatures with flying, but this thing is just a 4 mana 4-4 four, four flyer and then some. We'll play it on turn 3. But it's double white, so that might be a little bit more of a hindrance for us in the early game. I think we probably just want to go with the Planeswalker. This is going to be the hardest to answer. Goes well with sweepers. And if we can put this thing out on turn 4, it's got a lot of loyalty, right? Put any number of lands from your hand on the battlefield tap. That might be a, a turn five Ulamog. Yeah, Red and Seven is just like a ramp planeswalker. This is just, yeah, y'all are right in the chat. W7 is just exactly what we're looking for. Huntmaster would be a good card to ramp into as well. It's a creature that even if they have the removal, you still got two two twos. And I'm sure if we play Realm Cloak, we'd play Sarah. But I think this is a pretty clear Red and Seven. This does we don't even have to draft around this synergy-wise. This is just designed for ramp, right? The plus is like look for lands. Um, the zero is if you have a bunch of lands in hand, you can put them in play. And then the three is a create a giant creature equal to the number of lands you control. So red and seven is like tailor made for what our deck's trying to do, right? Okay, so if we play black, Eldest Reborn could be pretty powerful. We're going to have good cards to bring back. Um, Sky Ship's powerful, Sky Sovereign, but we're probably not going to be that good at crewing it. So we probably don't want that. Turn Timber Symbiosis, even though we're not going to have a lot of creatures, our creatures are going to be really good. So that's a fine split card for us to help us, you know, mitigate Flood and Screw by kind of being a land spell. I don't think it's an exciting card to be, like, third picking, but it's that or, like, Eldest Reborn. I don't think Return of the Wild Speaker is good for us. Um, and, I mean, we don't have a single black card except Gear Hulk, so I think Turn Timber Symbiosis makes sense. Does this let you put Planeswalkers or just Creatures? Only creatures. All right, so we're going to have to make sure we get some boom booms. Um, I know the symbiosis was a bad third pick. I mean, I don't think my pick was bad. You can tell me if I'm wrong. I'm not that, that much on cube. But, I mean, I think that pack just didn't have anything great for us. And I think symbiosis will be a nice card for our deck, but I'm not happy about third picking it. Um, all right, what is Blex? Is this a good card? Three mana, three, two. Pumps little creatures that we won't have. If it dies, you gain four. It seems playable, but not good. Uh, Triumph, this is the white-black pathway or something, right? Yeah, so maybe. Regrowth could be fine. I mean, Regrowth is better with, like, removal spells and stuff like that, but it could also get us back our busted cards, and we're looking to put... We should be able to spend mana, and it shouldn't hurt us that bad. Uh, the Glorious Anthem kicker thing, I don't think we want. That's, like, a white weenie card. Oh, Valky, that's a nice card to ramp into, right? Yeah, we want Valky. Uh, I know that means we need a black and a red, but we should be able to do that. We have a green-red duel, green-black duel, to another green-black duel. This could be more like a five-color green, and we just maybe play wrong cloak, maybe we don't. We're like, we're very heavy green, and we just light splash a bunch of other stuff. So this is the first pack. I kind of want a lot of cards, mostly the lands, but I also think Escape to the Wilds would be fantastic for us. Yeah, I, I agree. Escape is great. I mean, there's no question. Um... There's also a red-green Triome here that would certainly have a bunch of upside, and Blast Zone looks pretty good if we're going to be a green ramp deck. I guess Escape is, like, really good, and we just picked up a card that makes us want to like, play red, so 
Let's assume we're not going to get to play Realm Cloak now, maybe. Maybe we'll play Jund Ramp now that we have Valky. And not just Gear Hulk is an excellent creature. Yeah, Hall would be good for us, too. That's why I said there was a bunch of cards I wanted. Not that, like, Hall's incredible, but I would definitely play it. But let's assume for now we're Jund Ramp. Obviously, if we want to audible back into white, we know we have Temple Garden and Realm. But we have Escape, Valky, and Noxious Gear Hulk. So those are pretty, pretty good Jund cards to put in our green. So we can pick up Stomping Ground. Uh, Primal Command would be quite good for us. Gain 7 and search for a Boom Boom or something like that. Emergent Sequence is also pretty good. Like I said, don't sleep on 2 mana ramp. Um, I, again, I play a lot of these cards. Like, I'm pretty sure Sequence, Lotus, Command, Stomping Ground, Demon Bolt, and Golden Egg would all make my deck. Um, Primal Command is probably the best of them, right? Yeah. Maybe the Stomping. Let's have Discipline and take the Stomping Ground. I, I'm actually with you. Because if I'm going to do all three colors, I've got to prioritize these fixers. Because like I said, most of my green ramp stuff just makes green mana or lets me put lands in play from my hand or from my library, but it doesn't fix really. So I need to prioritize good red, black, and green duels now that I've got my colors. This is the green-white pathway, unfortunately, right? And this is the green-blue one. I needed the green-black or the green-red. Um, is Grizzly Salvage all right? You may put a creature or land from them into your hand, put the rest in the graveyard. So this is really good if you're using the graveyard. Otherwise, it's kind of a split card land spell, but you have to pay two for it. We don't use the graveyard at all. I don't think that's super useful. Um, I don't think this pack really offers us anything, but we're not going to play Season Pyromancer, right? I mean, maybe if we have enough red. I'm not expecting this to make our deck, but draw two, discard two, and get value out of the yard. If we end up with a ton of red mana, we can consider that. Hey, sorry, Infested. I appreciate it. You know, a lot of people said nice things like that to me and sent me messages and stuff. And look, I appreciate it. I'm fine. I'm healthy. Um, I'm, you know, I'm working a lot right now. By working, I mean playing poker and all that. And I'm in the process of buying a house that'll be ready in a few months. Um, once all that settles and my finances are good again and stuff, hopefully I'll be able to stream more. I'm not making any specific commitments, but I do appreciate how much everybody has like said nice things and seems to like my stream. And uh, it is noticed. All right. I'm going to take a Sika, I think over the uh, Dragon School Summit. It's definitely between those two for our ramp deck. Um, now Celestis, a nice five-color fixer as well. And it's a, it's good because if you draw a bunch of extra lands, this card you can just, you know, pay three and tap it and, and loot and, and uh, you know, discard extra lands. Or is it draw, discard, or discard, draw? Is it loot or rummage? Draw, discard, yeah. So you can loot with this thing by switching it from day to night. So that's a pretty nice card as well, since, you know, we're going to have plenty of uh, mana. We can afford to do things like that sometimes. Okay, I don't think um, Huntmaster's busted, but I think it's another nice boom boom to ramp into. Plus, we do want to have a decent amount of them be creatures for turn timber symbiosis. But also, it's just good because if they have removal, you still get your 2 2 twos, So it's a good solid card to ramp into. I play in person only, who bleeds. Um... Asika, I, I need all five colors to cast the back half of, right? But I've got stuff like the Celestis, so it might be doable. And Treasure Map might let me cast it. Um, okay, so if we wanted a Light Splash Blue, we could consider this card as well. Seems fine. Probably not really worth it. I guess Spike Field Hazard is... I mean, we probably won't play it. It comes into play Tap Red Land, but maybe. We grab Regrowth over that Blacks. I don't think we're going to use either of these cards. Wildest Dreams look pretty slow, not really what we're looking for. I think Blast Zone will likely be able to be used. If we need every last black and red source, maybe not. But if we go just three color... So I would definitely play Golden Egg, but Emergent Sequence is an actual two-mana ramp card. I could, We really need some decent spot removal. Like We're not going the Sweeper route this time, and we have a bunch of creatures, so that's totally fine. But uh, we could definitely use some efficient spot removal for this deck. So... Let's see, what are our options here? Outcast is a fine ramp card. Domri, eh, we're not really going to always have things to fight. We can make it mana. It seems pretty bad. Um, Swarm Shambler, super slow. I wouldn't be interested in that. Rishkar might be okay. I mean, you can always put a counter on itself. Hopefully you have the one other creature. 
This pack seems pretty bad for us. Like, none of these cards seem like Windmill Slams. Like, Blood Crypt's obviously a good duel for us if we're black, red, green. Blood Chief's Thirst is fine removal, but it's double black, so I'm not real excited about that. Uh, Dragon Master Outcast, I'm sure I'd play. Rishkar, I think, would be fine. Overall, I think this is a pretty bad pack for us. I might just want to lock up a Blood Crypt. Gear Hulk's double black. I mean, we don't have to play it, but it's a really nice creature. Gains life. It does pretty much everything we want. I'm not happy at all about first picking Blood Crypt for a three-color deck, but I think, that right, for our three-color deck right now with Rampant Fixing, but I think that's just, like, I'm not giving up very much. Like, Blood Chief's Thirst, if it was single black, like, if the kicker didn't have black, I would probably take it over the Blood Crypt. But we're not going to always have double black. Okay, so this this pack looks like it has some more interesting cards. Um, I mean, Golos is always going to be good in this kind of deck. Um, we can make the five-color thing work some of the time. Incubation Druid's a fine two-mana ramp creature. Rada is nice. lets you play the land immediately if you if you see it. Um, there's a green-black trial. Inscription of Abundance shouldn't be too good for us. This is this has synergy with creatures, which, you know, we have creatures, but they're giant ones. So, um, yeah, Elixir would be fine as well. I don't know which of these I want. I mean, Golos searches for any land, so we could put in, like, one white blue duel or something but uh we are we have been going more in the green red direction so we might have a decent amount of red sources for rada and we are going to play a lot of lands um there's a better chance we can get the rada back because somebody has to be red green i think golos is probably the pick because it's also uh an artifact so any ramp or control player can try and use golos i think that there's like a 50 50 chance we can wheel rada just depending on whether there's a red green player that can use it so I'm going to take Golos. I know it's five colors to activate, but even if you don't activate it, it's still five minutes, three, five, get a land. And then if we're searching for a land, we're probably not that far from five colors. Speaking of, Cold Steel Heart could be a way to produce, like, blue or white, should we want that. Uh, Lolith here is a pretty good Planeswalker, if we want to do that. Garrick's not great, right? Pump a creature, make a 3-3, three, three, which if they have more creatures than us, only costs one. Seems playable, because we'll play it on turn three a lot. Doesn't seem, like, amazing. Um, Icy would be fine, too. I mean, that's efficient enough for Google. You can always kill their best thing. I feel like this is between Cold Steel Heart and Lolith. I think we just want Lolith. We have Gear Hulk. We're looking to be, like, double, double black shouldn't be a huge problem for us. I know this is a Planeswalker that also has to do with creatures, but you just play it and make your two one ones, right? Like, if they're a control deck and they don't have anything out or whatever, you can play in zero and draw a card. If they have creatures you need to block, then you just make your 2-2 two -two ones. I think it's a pretty strong Planeswalker. On the other hand, Liliana I do not think is a strong Planeswalker. It's not even they discard, it's each player discards, so that's not very exciting. Red-Green Pathway is, of course, a good duel. Predator's fine, I'm not excited by that. Hagra Mauling could be good. Gives us lands, or it's a removal in the late game. An Inscription... But it's triple black, which we I don't know if we'll have that very often. But the black inscription is really useful. All three abilities could come in, bring back a, a dead ramp creature. We have one or two, two drops. I think the correct pick here is probably just to be disciplined and take the red-green duel. It could be hot hag Ramali. We could definitely use the removal, and it is a land as well if we don't have double black. I think this is between the pathway and the hag Ramali, and I think it's pretty close. Predator's a fine card, but I don't think it's going to offer our deck nearly as much as a red-green duel that comes into play on tap or the double-black removal here. Since I haven't been taking removal, I'm going to go with this one. I especially like it because, like I said, if I don't have double-black, I can always just play it as a land. So here's another pack I'd like a lot of cards from. Um, Timeless Witness would be good for us. Maze Mind Tome would be good for us. Tome rhymes with home. Karuga would be good for us. Coglo would be good for us. Magnus o Magma Opus, fine card to ramp into, single blue, the, the green creature land. I would take, like, any of these. Um, which one is best? Probably Kogla, I would say. It kills a creature when it comes down, kills an artifacts and enchantments when it attacks. Maybe Maze Mind Tome. It's really cheap. Draws cards, scries, helps us find our lands. I don't know. This pack, I, all these cards feel close enough. I, my intuition is that Kogla is the best.
This card's not good, right? One mana, one, one lifelink. I mean, that's menace lifelink. That's not a card I want to cast. The backside, 4-4, four, four, when you gain life, yeah, that's not good for us. Wayward Swordtooth is good if we're going to play a million lands. This is just like a 5-5 five, five that ramps. But we probably just want Mind Stone. Good for ramping on turn 2. Mitigates flu and, Flood and Screw. You know, sack it if you need, uh, if you have enough lands. Use it for mana if you don't. I mean, I'm kind of interested at this point. Oh, we're going to play the Temple Garden for a free white source. Um, just because we have Golos and uh, Asika. So we definitely want, like, you know, if we can get any good duels, then we'll play them regardless of whether they're, you know, even if they have white or blue in them. Like, I don't want to play a white-blue duel, but, you know, any, like, green-white or green-blue duel or something like that. So this pack doesn't have anything that I'm really interested in, so I guess Palaka Predation... Split card land spell, right? Play it over Swamp. So we have one, two, three, four, seven. So that's 27 um, spells, which is probably about right. So we probably, because like, you know, we have a bunch of lands here and split card land spells. Like we literally have like four of them or something. Florahedron and Spikefield Hazard, Predation, Symbiosis, Mauling. Okay, so this pack looks like it has some cards, and I don't know if they're going to be great or not. Hive of the Eye Tyrant, we would obviously play. Deem Worthy is pretty good removal. Cycle and kill something small or kill something big in a single red. Vorinclex, I know, was a really good card in Limited. If you would put more counters on a permanent put twice, that doesn't really do much. I mean, 6 mana, 6, 6 Trample Haste is always going to be good enough, but I don't actually think that's real exciting for us. I think we just want Deem Worthy or the Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Just gonna go with Deem Worthy because we don't have that much removal and it's towards the end of pack three. But the uh the hive the hive tyrant land might have been the right pick there, especially because we're probably gonna have to cut one or two cards. Though I do think Deem Worthy is single red, and I, I it's a nice flexible card. You know, kill a small creature and draw a card, or kill a big creature and then you don't draw a card. Speaking of, I don't think any of these cards are necessarily gonna make our deck, except maybe the outcast. So do we take like a red blue duel or outcast? But outcast actually looks quite good for us, right? So I don't think Rishkar. I, I think Rishkar will be okay, but we won't have it to drop out all that often. Hey, the Rada came back. I think Rada is better than Incubation Druid. So we're pretty on the like red green, but we have all these double black cards, so our mana is going to be uh, not perfect to say the least. But we've got some duels and. We can always just play our black cards here as lands. We don't have to cast Hagra Mauling or pull up a Predation. We've got Vastwood Surge. So that can get us double black right there. So we'll, we'll play like two Swamps. So there's no way we're going to play Fauna Shaman. Garrick looks medium, but we do have a lot of two mana ramp. So maybe a turn three Garrick's worth playing. Okay, I'm pretty happy about that. Tabled the red-green pathway. That's going right in our deck. Help out our struggling mana base. As well as the Lair of the Hydra, which is not some impressive creature land, but it's just going to replace basic forest. J Jasper Sentinel, there's no way we have enough little creatures for, right? No. But Wayward Swordtooth, maybe we can play. So we have a lot of playables. So we're going to have to make like three or four cuts, probably. Well, I think this archetype was wide open. Like I said, we have a ton of playables. So there's that at least. Should I maybe trim the black cards since we ended up with so many playables? It'll make our mana a lot better. Like, I can play Hagra Mauling because I can always play it as a land. But I could, like, cut Lawlith and Noxious Gearholt and not have any double black cards. And then I wouldn't need very many black sources. And, and then we'd just be, like, a green-red ramp. Maybe I could even play Season Pyromancer at that point. This is pretty good for what we're trying to do, right? Discard two, then draw two. For each non-land, discard this way, create a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, this seems like a really good card. Yeah, I don't want the removal to suffer, but we did get enough to ramp into, and I think double black is going to be tough for us. And I think this deck's pretty powerful. So if I just cut those, because we have so many playables, now our mana looks way better, right? Just like heavy red and green, light black splash. Plenty of black duels means we can probably cast Valky on turn 7, you know, for a black, a red, and 5. It doesn't mean we're going to have double black up early in the game. I didn't pick anything over Kogla. 
We picked Kagwa. Um, yeah, I like the look of this. I don't. I think I'm being too greedy if I play these power double black cards because I ended up with enough power. Like Ulamog, Symbiosis, Huntmaster, Kogla, Red and Seven, Golos. Like we have a lot of power cards. Rod is a power card too. Balky. This is really like a seven mana card. You're only playing it for two if you're desperate. Like we have a pretty good amount of power here. Scoot Swarm's a win con. Rod is powerful in the late game. So, how many lands? One, two, three, six, nine. So, 31. Um, so, obviously, um, we, we're going to want to play, like, a normalish ratio of lands because this is a deck that wants a lot of mana sources, but we also have, like, you know, Mind Stones and Guardian Idols and a bunch of stuff, a Sika, a bunch of stuff like that. So, let's assume we would play, like, 16 hard lands to go with, like, Counting the land spells as lands, but not counting stuff like Celestis and Guardian Idol, maybe. So we get to like 18 or 19 mana sources, something like that. So if we played 16 lands, we have to cut like, we have 9, Hazard is 10, Florahedron's 11, Predation's 12, Mauling's 13, and Symbiosis is 14. So we'd have to cut like two more cards for lands. We'll check the mana and make a decision on Blast Zone, but we do a lot of ramping, so Blast Zone being a little slow might not be a big problem. And since we don't have sweepers, like, uh, we need deck getting out in front of us could be. Um, but we'll check our colored mana sources and then make a decision on Blast Zone. For now, I think we need to cut, like, two spells or so for lands. So what are our weakest spells? Cure is cuttable. I mean, we have some creatures that can draw us a card, but that's not very exciting. It's kind of a bad three mana ramper. Hey, babe. Hey. You, did you come in to help us with our cuts? No. That's all right. I have no idea what to cut. I'm trying to eat so that I have energy to keep studying. <laughs> Rachel's got a full class schedule uh, for the first time in a while, and she's been studying nonstop. Um. So I think I think that QR is a pretty clear cut. Um, mauling could be cut, but remember, it also just comes in to play tap swamp, right? That's why I think we play it. Because in the late game, we'll be really happy to have it instead of drawing a land. And anytime like we don't have double black or we don't already have six or seven lands, we'll just play it as a land. No, Ranger class can definitely be cut. Um, but again, you know, it's a mana sink. It's a cheap, efficient card. How many creatures do we have? It's, it lets you play creatures from the top of your deck, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... 8, 9, 10, 11. We actually have a lot of bodies that we can play off the top of our deck. I know it's not like some all-creature elf deck, but we have 13 creatures at the moment. Yeah, I think... Let's look at the cuttable cards. I think Regrowth is cuttable. I'm not saying I'm cutting these, but, like, I'm not cutting, like, Dragon Master Outcast, for example, like, or Explore. So I'm looking at the cards that are cuttable in my mind. Ranger Class is cuttable. Regrowth is cuttable. Sword Tooth is cuttable. Garrick's cuttable. Pretty much it, right? Those are like the cuttable cards. And I think we only need to cut one. Maybe we should cut two. But I mean, remember, like, it's one thing when you start counting, like, the Celestis as a land, because you have to have three to cast it. It's kind of slow. But, like, you know, Turn Timber Symbiosis and Hagramalling and Predation, Tangle Floor Hedred, those are lands. Like, if you didn't draw other lands and you drew those, you drew a land. So there comes into play tap lands. And obviously, you know, so if you draw too many comes into play tap lands, that can be punishing. But they are literally lands. Um, so I think if we go 16, like, literal lands, counting land spell modals, then we have a lot of mana sources. Because, like, Sequence gets a land for two mana. Mind Stone, Guardian Idol are lands for two mana. Celestis is a land for three. So I think we'll be looking at something like 19 to 20 mana sources, which I think is pretty solid for the staff. So I think we only need to cut one of these, is what I'm saying right now. So of these four cards, Sword Tooth, Garrick, Regrowth, and Ranger Class, which is the weakest for us? I think Garrick, even though it's not a very good Planeswalker in general, I think um, is going to be good for us because we'll just play it turn three almost every time we draw it. We have one, two, three, four, five, six ways to ramp for two mana. 
So I think we want Garrick. Because this is just coming out on turn three. I agree, Tox. I don't think Garrick fits our deck very nicely. I took it on the wheel. I didn't even take it the first time I saw it. I took like a dual land over it. But given we have six two mana ramps, I think Garrick should be a nice turn three play for us. Thanks for resubscribing, Ixo. Really do appreciate it. Thanks to everybody who's still supporting my stream. I know I'm not streaming a lot these days, but thanks to those who do support it. Um, yeah, Ranger's Glass, Ranger's Class probably feels like the cut to me. Maybe Regrowth. I mean, Regrowth feels good because you're always getting back a good card, but our deck doesn't really revolve around any card or anything like that. We don't have cheap removal. Like, it's nice that we can get back, like, either, like, you know, maybe an Explorer or, or something like that, or a, a big creature, but really... What are we getting back with Regrowth that we're just not casting anyway? Like, we're just getting back whatever our best Wing Kong we drew is, right? Yeah, Treasure Map... Oh, yeah, Treasure Map's not for turn three. You're right. Five, five two-mana ramps for, to play turn three, Garrick. But that's still a lot. This is a 40-card deck, too, not a 60-card deck. But you're right. I'm, I'm counting Treasure Map as ramp, because it is, but it's ramp for, you know, Ulamog. It's not ramp for, uh, for Garrick turn three. You're correct. Yeah, Regrowth is better with cheap instants and sorceries, like cheap removal. I don't think Regrowth is doing a lot for us. I think I'm actually going to cut Regrowth. Ranger's class is going to be better than I was expecting, because we have 13 creatures. That's one out of three times the top card of our deck should be a uh, creature. So I think Ranger's class is actually better than it looks. We do need forest swamps and mountains, because we have Emergent Sequence and Basswood Surge to search up basics. So I'm not actually sure. We're probably going to have to cut Blast Zone. Even though I think we can uh, afford the colorless, we have to get all those basics in. So at minimum, we need one of each. But we actually need more than that. Not like a lot more, but we need the second red, I think. Because we, how many? We have a lot of red cards. One, two. Well, we actually have a lot of red duels, too. Three, four, five, counting the hazard. I mean, I'd definitely be comfortable with only having the one green, assuming we have enough green sources, but our fixers are green, so... So, like, we need to have, what, like, nine, maybe ten green sources? Like, ten would be nice, nine would be, like, a minimum. So we have one, two... Just think about, like, any main color in Limited, right? Like, you eight is, like, if it's, like, you don't really care if you don't have it till turn three or four. Nine is, like, you want to have it, like, every opening hand. And, like, ten is, like, you really want to have it because it, like, fixes for other colors or things like that. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Oh, all of our lands are green. Six, seven of our lands are green. So we're probably good on green sources. One forest makes eight. Symbiosis makes nine. And uh, Florahedron makes ten. Yeah, so I feel all right on that. I mean, one more forest would be nice, but I, I wouldn't say we have to have it. And we definitely don't have to have, to have two swamps just for our one double black mauling. We don't have that many cards to search for basics. Like, one more forest would make me really happy. Like, if we could play those five basics... I don't know if it's possible. This might be too many total lands, and I don't necessarily have more spells I want to cut. And like I said, I actually think Ranger's Class is going to work out okay for us. I mean, we could cut Vastwood Surge. That's true. It's just kind of slow, mediocre ramp, and then I don't have to play all these basics. Um, the main reason I'm playing the basics is for the Surge. But remember, like, you know, you're not going to draw, like, three of your five basics by, like, turn five very often. Or four of your five, or, you know, three of your four, even. So, like, you know, with four to five basics, we can definitely play Vastwood, Vastwood Surge. That's not to say it's worth it. Like, maybe it's not worth playing all these basics for Vastwood Surge. So maybe we cut Vastwood Surge so we can cut some of these basics. But, uh, but I'm not worth... Like, we don't need nine basics for Vastwood Surge. If we have five, we're good. But, again, we don't really need the second forest. We actually, I don't even know if we need the second mountain that bad. We did all right on duels. So maybe I'm supposed to cut Basswood Surge, just so I don't have to play extra lands, extra basics. Because I do want to play this Temple Garden for a free white source. Like, we do have uh, Golos. Even though we don't, we're not playing any white or blue cards, we have Golos and we have Asika. So we have reasons to have all five colors of mana, and we have ways to do that. Like, um... You know, Asika can produce any five, not to cast Asika, but to activate Golos. Um, treasure Map gives us treasures that can at least what, once be used to, to activate Golos or cast the backside of Asika, which is really powerful. And uh, there's, there's one or two other ways. Celestis makes any kind of mana. So we don't have a ton of five-color mana, but we have a few. 
Yeah, maybe the Basswood Surge is the cut. Just kind of slow ramp. We did pretty good on that. It's good with Ulamog, but most of the rest of our stuff is seven or less. I'm down with that. And then we can cut a forest. Now we actually need to put one land back in. Probably just want the second mountain. Well, it's not a big cost to play a Temple Garden, right? I mean, I'm not going to, like, stick an island in my deck for uh, just for a Seeking Golos. But, you know, if I have Celestis, searching Temple Garden out turns Golos on, right? And, like, it's a green-white duel. It comes into play on tap, like, if I need it to. Yeah, maybe I, maybe I uh, took something that wasn't that good over that cilantro. I might have missed it. Thank you, Azrith. Appreciate the subscription. Blast Zone could go back in. Kind of feeling second mountain, though. Because, like, we have some early red stuff. Rada's Ramp. Pyromancer seems like a pretty powerful card in double red. Kind of feeling second mountain. This gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hard green sources. You know, plus a little help with, like, Celestis and stuff like that. One, two, three, four, five, like six, seven, like eight, nine red sources. It's really like eight. I counted the uh, Celestis, which is also the 10th green. Um, that looks good. I think this, if we had stayed two colors, we would have used Blast Zone. But and even in, if we had been a light three, but I think with Golos and, um, like with Golos and Nasika, I think I'd rather play Temple Garden than Blast Zone. Oh, wait. I don't just magically get to have the deck. I also apparently cannot import Season Pyromancer. Um, so I don't know how we would fix that. Can I delete the Season Pyromancer or something and then import everything else and then manually, like, re-add it? I'll try to put it in the sideboard and see if it lets me do it now. What do we do? If it's not going to let me, like, import the deck, I mean, obviously, worst case, I can, guess, manually make the whole thing, but hopefully there's a way I can, like, get Season Pyromancer out of, um, out of my deck or something so that I can then import the rest of it and just re-add it. Oh, okay. Yeah, create a notepad file, and then that, that should work. I see what you're saying. And then delete Season Pyromancer, and then recopy it, and then hopefully I can just import that. Okay, that worked. Nice hack, nice hack. Chat is very smart. Uh, I don't know where the deck went, but let's see. I said it imported it, probably here. Does Season Power Master just not like exist? I have craft on. Still not showing up. Season Pyromancer just like not actually on Arena or something. What's the deal? I have to be doing something wrong because I know there's some Pyromancers, right? I shouldn't say I know. There may be no Pyromancers on Arena, but that would be surprising. Oh, 
Oh, it's not legal in this format, so it's not showing up. Good call, good call. Y'all are very smart, which is why the rest of those cards were not uh, also filling in. Okay, I actually need to change the format to 40 card deck, right? I don't know if that's gonna matter or not, but. Cool, so I think we got it right. The Season Pyromancer we added manually. Everything else is what we wanted. Two, two far, no, I wanted two mountains, right? One less forest, one more mountain. Because all, almost all of our lands are green. I know our fixing is green, but I think we're on like nine green sources, like nine hard green sources before we start talking about treasure maps and uh, Celestis and Golos. I think we want one forest. Um, because it's a, at first it's a night source and uh, nine feels like the right number of of uh, basic forest for this. I mean, hard green sources for this deck. And it's good to have the one basic. We might need double green. We might want to search for it with emergent sequence. All right. Let's see who we're up against. 115, 125. I can't type. If that's even the date. Um, genius naming convention, right? Brilliant. Let me see who I'm up against in round one this week. This was Cube. I like Cube more than Chaos. I really don't like Chaos. Chaos is one of my least favorites. There's just, like, not even synergy or anything. You basically are just taking whatever. I mean, obviously, like, you can try and muster together some kind of synergy in the middle of the draft. But for the most part, you can't, like, can't expect to see anything. So you're mostly just drafting a curve in the best cards you can. I think cube is way better than chaos. Even though I think the normal formats are way better than cube. No time off for good behavior. They don't they don't give you time off for good behavior. It's a school of hard knocks, Dangle. There's no good behavior at the poker table. Oh, okay, Semelin challenged me, I guess, so that makes that easy. Semelin's tough. Semelin always wins this thing. Let's see if we can take them down. Hey, we got a court of calls raid. Thanks for the raid, Alec. Hope you had a good stream. Um, and we got a Sissy Fuss subscription. Thanks for the subscription, Sissy Fuss. Appreciate the support. Just a limited tournament match. Cool. All right, well, for those of you who play this cube, how'd we do? Jund, uh, Jund ramp, our ramp's pretty good. Our removal's kind of lacking. I feel like our finishers are pretty good. Kogla, Huntmaster, Ulamog. Seems pretty good. Thanks, John Orange. I'd feel a lot better if I had a little bit of good, efficient, cheap red removal. So this is an actual one lander because none of these are split cards. We're on the draw with a Mind Stone, but I don't think we can keep a one. If I had a second land of any kind, I would definitely keep this. So this is a two lander, but they're both black. But if we mulligan this, we're going to five. Remember, this isn't a zero lander. The problem with this hand is that it's swamp swamp. But these, so I think this is a keep rather than go to five though. Just put back like Cogla or something expensive. Definitely Cogla, it's triple green. 
I mean, this hand is not good. It looks worse than it is. If we draw one turn two forest, we go turn one black tap land, turn two forest explorer or a sequence, like, we're, we're fine. Obviously, if we don't draw a forest, we're going to lose, but... So I'm going to put a predation because they're probably a red aggro deck, it looks like, with a turn one banneret, so we're probably not going to want to cast that. So, you know, hopefully we'll draw an untapped green source, and then this hand is good. We're already on the draw against an aggro deck. It'd be nice to not be uh, screwed. What does the front half of this do, since it looks like we're probably going to have to cast it? Take a creature out of their hand. Well, we've got a forest for next turn. I'm going to play Valky just to hopefully block. Play the Florahedron as a forest. Not an ideal start, but at least we have our mana now. I've been playing traditional best of three mostly when I'm off stream. It's really, uh, playing best of one, I was really liking Magic less and less. And uh, starting to play best of three again, it's definitely um, reminded me of how much better it is, you know, with sideboarding and with more interesting games. I think what Cunio said about the hand smoother was just right. It feels like a good thing, because removing non-games is a good thing. It's not like, oh, but without Savage Mana Screw, how do you appreciate? No, like, removing Savage Mana Screw and Flood is strictly good. But... It also, like, homogenized the games. You know, like, everybody would hit their curve, like, every game, and the games all felt exactly the same, and so that was kind of, like, making it less fun, I think. So I think switching back to, um, like, best of three has been a good change for me, at least. Everybody's different, but me personally, I think I enjoy it more. So I think this is Mindstone Emergent Sequence for Forest. Um, I'm going to take a hard hit here from, from Torbrand, but... Six isn't going to kill me, and I should be able to mount something next turn, even if it's just Garrick. This doesn't have Trample, so I can still block it. So I mostly just want to prepare to be able to cast Garrick next turn. Like, hopefully more than that, but at minimum. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Den plus Torbrand. I might just be dead. Um, not that I could really do anything. Wayward Swordtooth can't block yet, so I didn't have the ability to impact the board. I could have cast Explored and, and Prayed, which would be better than leaving myself dead on board. I didn't even count. Three, five, six. Yeah, I guess I'm dead. Good beats. Well, kind of an ugly start. Hopefully we'll have better mana draws in the next two games. Um, we don't have much of a sideboard. Gear Hulk would be pretty good in this matchup. The life gain could be important, so I think I want to bring that in. I'm not great at double black, but I'm not horrible at it. Maybe um, switch Temple Garden. We don't really want to be shocking. Well, I would have to bring in a forest, not so that's not going to help us. I was going to say I could switch it for a swamp, but I can't really do that. Um, anything like really good against control, not useful against aggro? Not really. Our deck's not that slow or anything. Just kind of had a terrible draw there, but... Um, Wayward Swordtooth is kind of slow. But also the 5-5 five five could be huge. But if I have to take out something, probably Wayward Swordtooth. Especially on the play. Wayward Swordtooth's a little better on the draw because you have an extra card, so you're more likely to put more things in play quicker and turn it on easier. Yeah, maybe Escape to the Wilds on the draw. I like that. I like uh, Escape I'll take out on the draw and Wayward on the play. Because Escape is slower but gives you a lot of resources, so it's better on the play. And Wayward Swordtooth requires you having a lot of other resources to put around it, so it's better on the draw. So I think on the play I'll go with the Escape, and for Game 3 if we get there, I'll switch the Wayward in and the Escape out. All right, a much better hand, of course. Do we want to play any of these black tap lands? Probably not. We have four lands. We're probably going to cycle the Deem Worthy. Kind of see how it shakes out. Turn two stone. Then next turn, we have the ability to play Oracle or Deem Worthy, which we'll probably Deem Worthy since there's already a two power creature in play. Well, now we'll definitely Deem Worthy since it's a four power creature. Should I do it now or wait? I mean, they probably don't have a pump spell. 
But they're probably also not playing a two mana or less haster and moving the splitter. So I think just in case they have some kind of pump spell, just do it now. Play it safe. Okay, so what are our options like? We could just Hagram all in that. Obviously, it's a fine target, and that buys us another turn. We do kind of want a Predation, but I wouldn't want to spend the whole turn Predationing. Can I ramp and Predation? Four Oracle means I play two lands at six. Escape means I play two lands at six. No. So I think we have Grimalling now. So which, which card do we uh, Hagger Maul? And I'll let that come into play because they're the one taking the damage, right? But uh, now I'm going to Hagger Maul in either Torbrand or Ferocidon. I mean, we don't gain life, but Ferocidon does have Menace, and it is attacking now. Um, Torbrand is probably enough better to Hagger Maul. I don't know. It's pretty close. This might be wrong. So we can Oracle End Predation if we find a land. Layer comes into play tapped. We can't otherwise. Probably need to find better stuff. So this looks like the turn we take off to escape while we're still at 13. Hopefully we don't die. And then can't do anything besides play our lands. Next turn, we're going to have seven or eight mana. We can Cogla away the Ferocidon, so that's nice. And then maybe we can Ranger's Class if we draw a land. Or we could, like, Rada, Explore, and Ranger's Class. But Rampaging Ferocidon is a pretty big problem. So we'll probably have to just Cogla it. Yeah, if we find a land, then we can play Explorer class, probably class, in addition to the Cogla. Just kind of hoping to hit some lands off that uh, Escape to the Wilds, not just, like, all spells. All right, though, this seems like a pretty clear Cogla, right? Sad to see the rest of those go, but I don't think we really had any choices. Um, I guess Flora Hedrin, I'm not going to cast as a 1-1, one, one, so I should just play it. I, I do have the layer, and I can always sack the Mind Stone. Yeah, maybe I was supposed to play a tap land last turn, and then I could shock myself and get an extra. But I don't, do I even want to shock myself for Ranger's class? I don't know. That doesn't seem great. Definitely something I should have at least thought about. Um, it's, it's definitely a good point to bring up. It would be close, whether that was better or worse. So it's definitely something I should have at least thought about. Um, not sure that I really want to be putting myself in a position expecting to shock myself, though. And if I just drew a land, then I could... And then I'd have eight anyway. Okay, so the interesting thing now is the Grim Lava Mancer, but I'd rather them be killing my Oracles and Scoot Swarms than me. So I think I'm definitely casting my creatures. The question is what order? I want to play a land immediately after Scoot Swarm. I can go, like, Scoot Swarm, Predation immediately as a land. And then if I... I can still play Oracle. If I hit a land on top, I can still play it. I can also just play the Oracle. And then I can go go to play the land if it's on the top. But then if they see a land on top, they can't kill Oracle before I can play that land. But if I go to play Scoot Swarm, then they can kill Oracle before I play that land. So I'm not really sure. This It feels like Scoot Swarm... 
Play Predation immediately as a land, then play Oracle and get to see the top card to me. The sequencing here is pretty interesting. It's definitely right to cast Scoot and Oracle, better than Lava Mancering my creatures than me. Um, but I'm not 100% on the sequence. But this feels right to me. Okay, we didn't get the land. We're going to attack with Cogla because we still have plenty of blockers. And again, I'm not scared of them, like, killing two of my creatures and then making me block or something. Again, better my uh, creatures than me here, so. This is going to be tight, depending on whether someone can burn me out or not. Obviously, nothing I can do if, if uh, they can, but that's why I have to be attacking with Cogla or I just lose eventually. Maybe I shouldn't have killed Bone Splitter. Was that even an option? I don't think I chose that. No, it wasn't an option. I mean, I didn't have to attack, but... Uh, looks like I would have died to Banefire anyway. Well... Sad Panda, as usual, in cube. I still have no idea if my deck was good or not. My draw that game was fine. Like, it was good. Um, like I said, I needed more cheap removal, and then I lost aggro. Um, but, I don't know. The deck felt good to me. Maybe it uh, maybe it was a little too slow. But Huntmaster is a pretty good catch-up. Gear Hulk, when I boarded it in. Feels like... And I have a lot of cheap RAM, so... I mean, if I try and sit back forever, I'm just going to end up getting burnt out. Like, a deck like uh, like Assemblance is always going to have some deal threes and burn spells in their deck. Um, and I still had three blockers. I know they had the Den of the Bugbear. I didn't miss that or anything. But, like, if they want to be able to hit me with a creature, they have to go, like, end of turn, kill one of my creatures, on tap, kill another with the Lava Mancer. That's four damage that didn't hit me. And then I still have a 1-1 one -one to chump the Bugbear with. So, like... Even though that's not, like, ideal, if my creatures can soak up four damage, I think that's worth it. Like, I wasn't even expecting they would do that or anything. Unfortunately, the format is not double elimination. Um, what are you going to do? But uh, Semblin had a nice aggro deck, which I think was probably a bad matchup for us. I needed a little bit more cheap removal, maybe, like, you know, some creatures that gain life. But obviously, you know, game one was rough. That game, I had a perfectly fine draw. I just uh, lost a close one. Well, now we can root Semelin on. So I'm going to uh, raid Semelin. So good luck to him the rest of the way. Sorry, uh, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing in cube, but I'm sure we'll get back to um, base set draft when the next set comes out. Maybe uh, one or two more Crimson Vow drafts. I've actually been liking Crimson Vow. Like, I've, I've been drafting, like, traditional Crimson Vow best of threes. The games are pretty good, whenever they're not ruined by one of the many broken rares. How about a draft? <sighs> nah, I'm, I'm really just not in the mood to fire a draft right now, uh, Geek. Thanks, though. And thanks to everybody who does tune in. I mean, I know, you know, when I'm not streaming, you're not watching me. It's not, like, cost you anything. But I do appreciate... Uh, everybody who does still tune in weekly for the sweatsuit. And uh, for now, I'm going to raid Semelin, who just beat me. So we, you can continue on watching the sweatsuit if you want. Uh, what is double feature, Privy B? I mean, I'll always try anything. Like like I said, I'm not against cube. Um, I just generally don't like high power magic. And I generally like like really grindy low power magic. Which is why I generally don't like cube. I'm not in any way against cube. Uh, I ha I'm against chaos. I think chaos draft is just a bad format. I don't understand why it exists, other than it's like a novel thing that someone came up with. But I think it's just a bad format of draft. Cube is not bad. Cube, it depends on the cube. Like, power storm cubes, to me, are not fun. But, like, if you put a really balanced cube with lots of grindy cards and interesting decks and synergies, you can have a really great cube format. So, you know, cube is hit or miss, just depending on that cube. Uh, and, uh, but, I mean, I just didn't catch this arena cube much, so I just don't know what's going on. Oh, yeah, I'll probably try that Privy B. I mean, I like Dinistrad and Val, so I don't see why I wouldn't give that a shot. When does it, you said it comes out on Friday? Yeah, I'll definitely try that out. Um, cool. Thanks for letting me know. I didn't even know that was happening, but I'll definitely check out a little combination of Innistrad and Val. And like I said, thanks to everybody who tunes in. I know it was a short stream. I was hoping it would be longer, um, but uh, you know I appreciate it. You know, and uh, now you can we can continue on in the sweatsuit as Railbirds following Semelin. Good luck to him the rest of the way. Good luck to all of you in your drafts, and I will see you next time.